Hey everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here, um, founder and CEO of EXP Realty, and this is our expansion podcast today. I'm super excited to talk with Tina Call, four-time icon agent out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, we just came out with the stats for um, for 2022, which we socialized uh, about a week or so ago, um, and. Man, you guys knocked it out of the freaking park. Uh, top 50 teams in the country, but uh, but number five in production um, with, uh, what would you say, 850 sides and pendings in 2022? Something crazy like that? Yeah. Yeah, we were, uh, yeah, 850 closed and pending. And um, I think we closed like 790 deals. Um, and almost 400 million, 398. So very wow. exciting. Well, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, anyway, that's, uh, and, and you did that all by yourself, right? All by myself. I did it. Yep. Every single seller, every single buyer. No, <laughs> I had a lot of help. I always laugh with my team and I say, I'm worthless to you guys. I don't sell homes anymore. So you better sell something. <laughs> there you uh, go. Well, it sounds, it sounds like, uh, what, what's your team look like? What's, uh, what's the organization look like? Yeah, so we have um, so for the for the last year we had about fifty of the agents that were participating in in those sales. So we had fifty sales agents, um, and then we have an organization, a staff of about um, fourteen people. So including ISAs and um, admin and leadership. So we're we're small and now, mighty. There you go. Now, when you well, you got in the business um, not not long before I got in the business, but. Uh, did you ever imagine you would sell like almost four hundred million dollars worth of real estate in one year? Heck, no. I mean, I, I mean, just to, the first seven eight years, I was by myself, you know, and then moved to a new new state and had to start back over in two thousand and nine. So I was one of those agents that was completely exhausted, selling over one hundred thirty homes a year myself personally with my assistant, and then found. Thank God found EXP and and met so many cool people in the organization um, and learned that there are better ways of doing things. So, yeah, there and and you know the the reality is it's always a continual learning process, right? There's no matter where you're at, there's yet more better ways to do things. Oh my gosh, for sure. I, I, I've never, I never stopped learning. I always feel like just a student. I, I love to read and I love to, um, you know, just think about the next phase. And so we're not done growing, but now we get to grow people, which is, which is different, right? It's not just growing yourself and your own abilities. It's, it's growing others. And so that has been, that's actually been the new challenge and skill set that I'm, I'm learning. So first it's, let me learn how to sell to a buyer and a seller. Let me learn how to sell in high volume. Oh, let me learn how to have a staff. Let me learn how to have a team. And now it's, let me actually learn leadership. And that's been our, our challenge. I'll be honest and transparent for the last year and a half, um, growing an organization of our size, which is minuscule compared to 86,000 people at EXP. But um, reading like the five dysfunctions of a team, I thought, wow, we have probably six of those five dysfunctions. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, Patrick uh, Lencioni, he he wrote, I mean, have you read any of his other books? That, oh, yeah. He's he's my favorite. I listen to the podcast now. I've done The Working Genius, which changed the, the entire mindset of our business. Just that one working genius um, book and concept. Right. So it's kind of funny you mentioned the five dysfunctions of a team. Um, what's ironic is that any team that scales... Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, it's like, the, it's like the organization read the five dysfunctions of team in reverse. Like they Correct. were looking to actually like, like I, I refer to it in, in EXP terms. I said, I've yet to read a book on how to build a better silo, but it seems like everybody's read that book. Pretty and, much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty um, much. And, and so there's like this whole, like, how do you, how do, how do, how do we up level individually? Because as leaders, we obviously have to up level. And then how do we how do we help others learn this new craft, this new skill set, yes. um, which is totally counter to you know micro solo entrepreneur businesses. Uh, you know when you eat what you kill, 
there there is no dysfunction because you are it and you either it. eat or you starve exactly exactly um, yeah i mean it's it's a whole new world when and it's like um i they always say well, who's the best leader what type of leader is the best leader i said a self-aware one so anytime we have an issue i always go back to me and go okay how did i create this because i know i created it with a with a lack of something a lack of maybe i don't give enough feedback because i feel uncomfortable or i don't you know i, I didn't understand that personality style or communication miss so um, as a as a leader, um, you know, I think a lot of it just falls on nobody teaches us interpersonal skills. Nobody teaches us how to run organizations. We just naturally follow our gut and have these abilities and then they grow and we're like, oh, shit, I have to I actually have to manage people. Nobody taught me this. Now what? Um, let me go get some books, you know, and thankfully, I love to read and, and digest information. But it you're right. It was like moving backwards. So. So we're figuring it out. We're actually a very close knit organization um, that's become closer because of these dysfunctions. And I think it's actually great because we can we can all grow into the leadership roles together. Awesome. Now, you've you've got uh, you, you said a, a, a small organization, but this small organization, you have eleven hundred people, I think, that you've uh, brought you know over directly or indirectly uh, into EXP. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, so in the four years that I've been here, I think I've averaged like three and a half or three and a half people a month that I've brought personally, myself personally sponsored. Um, so it's been about 160 personal sponsors. And then, um, yeah, we're about 1100 now in the organization and we're growing right around 45 to 50 agents a month, which is pretty cool. So we're still seeing, you know, growth and, um, I'm just excited because I think we we're half the size of some of the biggest organ, you know, companies out there and we've got a lot of room to grow. Oh yeah, for sure. So um, what, um, you know, obviously um, you're growing rapidly in, in EXP, you know, teams continuing to produce more, more agents on the team, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, you've already touched on a little bit of it, but how do you, you know, it, and even if you if you even consider there to be competition or not, but how do you how do you stay ahead of the competition competition and and then also remain successful in the industry? Um, I think you know for me it's it's just um, it's really working on self development. I, I I keep coming back to it because I think it's important. So we we laugh at our company. We say we're a self development self improvement company that happens to sell real estate, and so we talk about our mindset our our physical well-being, which I know you're into, you know, in the last few years, it's been fun to watch you, you know, bring that to our company, um, to EXP. But we we want our agents to be strong leaders. We want them uh, to build each other up. And so we really focus on, you know, assessments and DISC and knowing why they do what they do, making sure that their partner, um, that is a huge investment in their life, right, has, understands why they're, they're, their mate is off selling houses and can't be home on a Saturday. You know, let's do some disc assessments on, on them too. And, and the kids and everyone starts to know why each other ticks a certain way and, and life and communication uh, go hand in hand. So we start that way. Um, staying ahead is, is working on ourselves first as humans. And that's, that's it. You know, I think when you think about uh, the business, you're working with people all day all day, every day, all day, every day. So if we learn how to communicate better with one another um, and then clearly have defined roles, um, whether you're a salesperson on the team or you're you know, a sales manager, um, staying within those boundaries, I think it just all ends up becoming easier. Um, so that's our, our gift, I think, is that we're constantly trying to improve ourselves, not so much looking for the next get rich quick thing or the next CRM. Um, you know, it's more just, hey, let's work on ourselves and be better people. And then regardless of what CRM we, we use, we're going to be successful. Right. No, great, uh, great advice there. Uh, now, you, you're you part of, you know, you've been big in, in helping drive luxury or the luxury conversation in EXP. I think you're part of what we've just recently rolled out, I think just at EXPCon um, in October, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, you know how has the how what got you into luxury first, 
And then how has the, uh, how have you been able to, to help, you know, m message and create opportunities for luxury in, inside of EXP? Um, so I think that, you know, luxury, I've always said is a mindset. Um, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. Um, my parents didn't have a lot of money. We moved to North Carolina and started to see that in our in our area. Um, you know, we started to see million, two million, three million dollar homes. And I built my business here 10 years ago on picking up the phone and calling expireds and calling Fizbos. And so when I ultimately landed, you know, my first luxury listing, which was over a million dollars, um, you know, I was a little younger at the time, but I always I showed up with, you know, I always wore a suit, you know, or a, a nice dress. I always looked the part. I always had a nice vehicle. It was clean. And all of my marketing material was always the elevated portion of the brand. So when I was with Remax, I always wanted, you know, more luxury enhanced branding. So instead of using like the red, white and blue folders, we used the dark blue elevated with the silver. So we always lean towards looking luxury. So when we got that first luxury listing and we did the, you know, the aerial photos and all the things that people want, it was sort of like, oh, I am a luxury agent now. That was it. It was just a mindset um, because a house is a house is a house. And so I think that for me, there are so many agents that believe that, you know, luxury is this, this, this hard thing to, you know, do or become. And so I, I saw it as sort of a, a miss at EXP, hey, we don't have a luxury division. We have to convince people that we have this luxury division. And we do now. I mean, we have all of the curated materials that we need for a luxury agent to do their job. We have all of the syndication ability to get our listings into the Rob Report and the DuPont Registry and the New York Times and really create the exposure that a luxury agent wants to bring to their listing. But at the end of the day, um, to become a luxury agent is in your own mindset that you can understand that type of uh, demographic, you can cater to to them, you understand their lifestyle, their goals, their dreams, and, and then you have a company that has the right collateral and the right um, exposure to to back up your, your mindset. And I think we have that now at EXP and, and we can invite agents to, um, to see what kind of a competitive advantage we have because I go in against a lot of other luxury agents and we beat them out with what EXP now offers um, our agents. So I'm excited to continue to roll that out, continue to develop it, and continue to help luxury agents um, do their job. Awesome. Well, no, thank you for championing that. I know there's a number of people on the council that have been championing it. It, um, it sounds like you naturally grew into luxury. It's ironic. Um, I, I, I was kind of a bread and butter kind of agent Mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of online lead gen. And as I became um, good uh, at, at that side, I ended up representing over 10% of the high-end buyers in my local market because of my lead gen, even though I wasn't quote unquote a luxury person. So, right. you know, you can, you can get there just by, you know, being professional. By the way, I, I was unique in that. I was the only guy in the office that I'm aware of that I remember that wore a tie to go show properties. Right, um, right. And, and, and I just said, hey, this, if I'm a professional, I need to look professional. And, and it, uh, it you know, ultimately paid off for most of my clients. There was actually one client that actually told me that he wouldn't work with me because I was wearing a tie. Yeah. But that, that was only, only once. <laughs> That's right. Only one, only one. But yeah, yeah. I think you've got it. You have to look the part. I mean, and take yourself seriously. When you put 100 realtors in a room, you know, most are going to feel they're going to look very casual, at least the ones that I see out in our market, because, hey, it's hot in North Carolina. I want to wear a short sleeves shirt or I, I want to wear shorts and some loafers. And you're like, well, if you if I show up and you show up, somebody's going to say, gosh, I mean, she may be overdressed, but she's taking her job really seriously. And so and that's what I that's what I wanted them to feel. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even I think that advice even plays out better today. Yes. Um, because, uh, when the market's hot, like we, we saw in 2021 mm -hmm. in, you know, second half of 2020, all of 2021, um, literally, you know, you only had to show up to get business. Um, right. and, 
and uh, and and I think a lot of agents became quite casual over the last, we'll just say, five, six, seven years in real estate uh, because they didn't have to, uh, you know, look the part. Uh, but now, you know, obviously, real estate volumes are off thirty percent or so, depending on the market, and uh, that means that there's um, a lot fewer clients, uh, and you've got still a fairly large number of agents that are out there trying to serve that clientele, and which means that you do need to differentiate to make sure that you get that uh, to get into the relationship with that consumer. And John T. Malloy, Dress for Success, was one of my favorite books back in uh, back in college, um, and uh, you know that all all that same stuff applies and emotionally makes a big difference in somebody's mind. Uh, when they see somebody professional, they trust them more. They're more likely to uh, take their advice, all that good stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, and feel like they're they're working with someone. Yeah, and it also makes you feel better. Like I tell my team when they're when they get up in the morning and they put on their outfit, it tells the universe I'm ready to go to work. I'm not sitting in my pajamas. I'm not you know on my laptop in my you know in my sweatpants. I'm ready for action. So um, I also feel like it does make the agent feel more successful. And when you feel more successful, you have a better result. Right, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. And today yeah. I even put my jacket on for this I know. podcast. That dressed up for us. I love it. <laughs> right, there you go. Hey, um, so um, obviously a lot of lead gen. How do you? What's your lead generation strategy look like? I mean, um, uh, keeping fifty-five agents or fifty-something agents, you know, um, you know, busy putting together, you know, 800 plus sides a year. What, uh, what's your lead generation strategy? Um, so I think, you know, I've always wanted to, to have diversification in our business. So, um, 30% of our business was past clients and sphere 30% of our business, um, comes from, uh, expired FISBO open houses. The other 30% comes from uh, leads that we buy, you know, from various sources, realtor.com, Zillow, uh, Facebook, pay-per-click. So, so that's a nice, um, you know, uh, it's a, it's just a nice segmented business. Um, we use, you know, we, we moved to eXp and we used uh, KB core for the last four years. Um, we've been running the business on KB core and it's been fine. I know some people say, Oh, it's really hard to use. Oh, it's really easy. It really just depends. A CRM is basically the one that you'll use. You'll laugh, Glenn. I've grew my business as an individual agent with this CRM, which was an index card file box. And, you know, uh, I, I didn't have a CRM. So this is my CRM. And I literally sold 130 homes a year on, on this. Um, so my team uses the CRM. The agents use it. But I think, you know, as long as you're consistent in following up with your leads and keeping them somewhere, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh- no, for for sure. I, well, one is, you know, what, do you, what is it that you use that you can trust, uh, that you can, you know, feel like you're you're well well covered. And the fact that you're, you know, that that's pretty old school, you know, with I the. Know. Uh, um, <laughs> that's my I, I think, in fact, yeah. Well, the uh, I, so right now, of course, we bought the worldwide perpetual rights to all of Tom Hopkins training systems, right. and I'm in the process of rewriting, and I should say. Well, it's, I've used that term loosely because I haven't had time to really focus on it, but rewriting the book, How to how to Master the Art of Selling Real Estate. Ooh, and it. of course, it, in that original book, he was all about the index cards and keeping track of the clientele and the whole nine yards. And I, I'll be honest, you're the first person I've seen that's still keeping index cards. <laughs> Well, and I, you know what I do? The index cards now for me is my agent attraction. So, and I can't tell you how many agents I have at at EXP in our downline. They're like, I can't use CRMs. And just my brain doesn't work that way. And I go, let me show you a trick. And they literally adopt this. I call it my million dollar box because they actually will do it because they've got leads on post-it notes and index cards and envelopes in their kitchen. I said, keep the index cards everywhere in your car, in your kitchen. And then have the January through December, you talk to somebody, cut the time that they say to call them back in half, stick it in your little card box. And every month, just look at that darn thing and you will be fine. And it really does work. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. No, that's a, uh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, Simple solve the complex as John uh, Shep Black would say. <laughs> well, so 
obviously you've mentored a number of people in real estate, um, yeah. you know, whether it be on your team or people you've attracted or maybe people you've worked at uh, various brokerages, et cetera. But what would be, um, what advice would you give to someone considering a career in real estate? Um, I think, you know, I, I think a lot of people, they, they think that this is going to be a very easy career to start. Um, I think a lot of times you look at a successful real estate agent and you go, well, that seems easy, but there is so many facets to this business. And I think the biggest one is communication, you know, learning what to say. Um, we just had Phil Jones in our office and he of course wrote exactly what to say for real estate agents. And I think it's learning your sales skills, falling in love with the language of sales, falling in love with, um, you know, helping people make a decision. You're a, you're a professional decision maker upper. You know, you want them to say yes or no. You never want a maybe. So I think it's giving yourself time. Give yourself four years. Pretend you're going to college and you're going to go get a degree. You're not going to be amazing year one. Year two, you might kind of figure things out a little bit and, and you feel confident. By year three, you're like, yeah, I think I got this. By year four, you're opening your own brokerage to compete against DXP. I mean, that's how it goes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you, you figured it all out in year four. So I think it's, it takes time. And it's a sales business and it's it's a it's a human relationship business. So if you don't like people and you don't like learning how to communicate, stay out of the business. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely um, you have to be a student of business, student of personal development, a student. You basically just have to be a, a student. A student. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, I remember um, years ago, the. Uh, I, I was, you know, I did martial arts judo and remember hearing that you actually aren't even qualified to be a student until you get your black belt, because you finally know enough to be able to ask the right questions on how yeah. to actually improve your game. And um, sounds like you're uh, definitely still very much a student uh, of the uh, of the business. And uh, but you're also a black belt. So you're that's right. You've, you've that's got right. To, I love it. So, yeah. uh, Forever learning. Gina, I love it. Exactly. So um, how would people get a hold of you? What's uh, where, where are you where are you at uh, in the uh, in the online world, so to speak? So I would say my biggest um, uh, give back piece that I started when I moved to EXP was on YouTube. I just I let I put all my training out there, my listing presentation, buyer consultations just for agents to learn. So that's probably the biggest place that they could find what I teach, I guess, um, I'm not selling them anything. So um, I'm selling them on themselves and then Instagram and, and Facebook, of course. So just, just Google my name and you'll find some, some things about me. Well, awesome. Well, Tina, this has been uh, a, a blast, uh, obviously. Um, super, actually, it's great getting to know a little bit more about you and your business. I know it's only been about 20 minutes that we've had a conversation. I we run into each other, at, you know, at our events. And obviously, I, I see the stuff, the videos that you, you guys, you and your husband have done. Um, one of them was pretty hilarious. The sort of the, the sort of the the uh, like a little EXP explained kind of video <laughs> that I thought was just hilarious. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, thanks for doing everything you're doing. And uh, uh, again, till till next time. Um, Thanks for being part of this podcast and thanks everyone for listening. Thank you all.